Hey there, it's day seven of 25 Days of the Orville, and today we are highlighting John Lamar, played by Jay Lee. Let's go. Okay, so I have to admit, I haven't seen much of Jay Lee in anything. Um, uh, his, his acting career has not crossed paths with my watching, watching habits. So um, I went through and uh, just kind of run through IMDb just to kind of see, you know, if there was anything that, you know, of course he's on Family Guy and, and uh, the Orville, American Dad, um, Cleveland Show. None of these things I really I watched that much of. Um, so didn't really know that much about him. So I went to his biography and just looking down here, he's born in St. Louis. Okay, I began playing classical piano at the age of three, which is amazing. Um, he, he performed at Carnegie Hall when he was 12 years old. That is just an incredible feat right there. Um, then um, here it says he moved out to Los Angeles with only $200, slept in his car until he saved enough to move into a money and apartment. That's that gets respect. Right? That's really some dedication to what you're what you're doing. You're taking the big chance. You're diving for it. You're going for the whole thing, you know, kind of thing. That's just amazing, you know, to be able to do that and be able to get where he is. I guess he obviously got in with uh, some things with Seth MacFarlane, who tends to really take care of the people that he likes that are around him. So I'm um, just great that uh, that would that happened. Um, so let's go to got my snapshots that I have here um, only a few this time so because he's not really that highlighted of a of a character yet I'm hoping for more things in in season three really to just really give him some you know more episodes to shine in um, but he does do I mean he does do writing and and other things so he is uh, uh, a writer on um, he's a producer of a different shows so he's busy so I don't know maybe he doesn't want to have that big of a uh, a play and a big bad, that big of a part in the Orville. I mean, he writes for the Cleveland show. He produces a couple of different shows. He's doing directing, um, different things like that. So it's not that the guy's not busy. So maybe what we get from him in, you know, the Orville is just maybe fun time, which it really shows that he seems to be having having a lot of fun. Here's where we get introduced to him on the first days of the of the ship. Um, and then, of course, the incident, the Mellon Giffenden statue incident, which, you know, causes all kinds of problems um, and stuff, which kind of leads us into his character that he's like very out there, very open, open and over the top kind of character. And then we have the uh, New Dimension episode where they go into the flat thing and he's the one who really does all the engineering and gets all of that going and stuff and kind of highlights the fact that his character has this underlying engineering thing that he doesn't really want anybody to know about and that really plays into some people out in the real world it's like i've i've always said in in many situations you know especially computer wise if you go somewhere and you tell people that you know something about computers that oh, suddenly everybody's bringing their computer problems to you and now you suddenly become responsible for all these people's computers and, and everything else. So it's, it's like better sometimes to not let people know that you can do something because then, boom, it all comes to you and you, I, don't, I don't want that. And then we get to the uh, episode. This is, uh, I think this is Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow where they're using the little time travel th thing and that little object and there that all goes wrong and brings back the other kelly but he was really part of that you know getting that to work and making it you know yeah i don't say he replaced like the scotty or the Jordy laforge or anything but his pattern kind of mimicked the Jordy laforge a little bit where they couldn't really figure out what to do with an engineer in the beginning of the first seasons of next generation and then they finally took somebody from you know one part of the ship and then moved them into being the engineer and putting him there. And he kind of had the same same thing, except he doesn't have to have his eyes covered uh, like Jerry LaForge did in, in Next Generation, which really was kind of a sad thing because so much of an actor's progress, their process, what they're doing, so much of that is part of their eyes, right? If I'm doing something and something goes boom, 
on screen and you move your eyes that way, well, that's telling, you know, the people, oh, go that way. So he would have to relearn that instead of just moving his eyes, he'd have to make sure and move his whole head and things like that, you know. But obviously J. Lee doesn't have to deal with that and stuff. So, so that's good. Um, we're back to the beginning now. So, but I'm really impressed with, with just all of the things that he is doing, right? I mean, people who tend to come from nothing kind of understand a little bit more what the struggle is and, and how to get there and how to stick with people who are, you know, going to help you and going to be with you and who are people of quality. And that seems to be all, everybody on, on the Orville is just really quality people who really give a lot to their performance and to the show. And Jay Lee is no different than any of the other ones. All right. Well, that's Jay Lee uh, playing John Lamar. Um, one of the more crack up characters. I mean, they, they banter back and forth, you know, him and, um, Scott Grimes, you know, Gordon Malloy, they banter back and forth in the front of the ship. And, and now that he's in engineering, it's, that's kind of separated. So we just, and maybe that's better because in the beginning, the banter was a little, maybe for some people, a little too much. So now that they're separated, it kind of separated that season two definitely had less of the blatant comedy. And now, you know, just every once in a while, a line comes up and stuff. That's, that's funny. And I still find it funny. And, and and normal, like normal life. I mean, some people, like I've said before in some other videos, some people didn't like the big heavy comedy part of it, um, but the, the comedy in Next Generation, some of the other things was very dry, it was very processed. And I like this because it's more, and Jay Lee is a big part of that. It's more just, I wonder how much of it is just ad-libbed on set, right? I mean, that would be a good thing if we could find that out, how much just kind of flows through whatever they're doing and they just start making comments and, and, and being open about their character and being able to, to just throw out lines and stuff every once in a while. So that would be good. I'll see if I can find out anything about what's, how much ad lib is going on in, in the show um, and how much they have to stick to the scripts and, th and things like that. So, but anyway, Jay Lee is just, Another one of my favorites, of course, I hate saying that because then they all end up being favorites, but Jay Lee is a really good character, and that's our highlight for today. All right, well, stay tuned because the next one on the 8th, we'll be doing Isaac. We're going to be highlighting Isaac next um, in our path on the 25 Days of Orville. Thanks for watching. Take care. Mm -hmm.